G'day friends and welcome to another one of my videos. Today I'm coming to you from cold, blustery, wet Wellington, New Zealand. It's been so cold and miserable out there. I haven't dared to get out there to take any footage, so apologies for that. Maybe next time in the city I get to show you around a little bit. So while I'm locked up in this room, I thought I would talk to you about the recent announcement of Canon's first full-frame mirrorless uh, camera the EOS R and it's uh, great news and like I said we've been waiting for a while to get the announcement but it's good to see that the news is finally out. They also made some big announcements about new lenses for the camera, the RF lenses uh, and they're being touted as uh, obviously game changing with uh, a lot more performance and uh, you know it's something that's never been seen before. Anyway, I'll reserve my judgment until I get to uh, hold it in my hand and actually, you know, play around with it. But let's talk about the specifications because they sound pretty exciting. So first of all, the lenses themselves, there was four new lenses that were announced. Uh, uh, they are actually uh, better image quality uh, than the EF lenses and they're supposed to have uh, a deeper focal length. So that's always good to see. You know, we want to see those, you know, buttery smooth backgrounds that everyone loves to see on YouTube. So that's uh, very exciting. It actually has a flippy screen, so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if uh, it will be a good uh, vlogging camera. But there was also other announcements about accessories such as a, a control ring. Now this is a really good uh, innovation. So the ring itself, it uh, sits where the focus ring is, and it can be programmed to do other things apart from the focus. So you can control the exposure, the shutter speed, the ISO, and you know do a bit of exposure compensation, which is great news for you know people trying to capture that shot you know quickly uh, using this particular ring. So that's that's great. That's an innovation we haven't seen that before. Um, but the lenses themselves, are, one of them is an RF 28 to 70 millimeter f2, and that has a uh, it's a zoom lens, of course, and it has uh, a maximum constant aperture of f2, which is you know really exciting because uh, obviously we get some nice uh, soft backgrounds with that particular uh, zoom uh, lens, and you get that um, depth of field. As well as that, we heard about an RF 50 millimeter, which is an f1.2, uh, which is also good news uh, if you want um, something that's more fixed uh, range, uh, as well as an RF 24 to 105 uh, millimeter, and that's an f4. They also snuck in an RF 35 millimeter f1.8, but that's for the M range, which is great because as you know, I'm an owner of the M50, so it's great to see a, a nice 35 millimeter uh, uh, um, lens for that camera with uh, such a wide aperture, which is good news. So the EOS R is a 35 millimeter full range mirror mirrorless camera, and it's very lightweight. Uh, but uh, apparently it's, it's supposed to be as tough as the current cameras in the range. Um, the new system itself uh, has an RF mount. Now, it has the same diameter as the EF mount, which is good news, but bad news that we actually still need an adapter to use the EF lenses. Now, the reason that they, they're using a new system is that apparently these uh, lenses are supposed to be closer to the sensor uh, in order to improve uh, the quality. So, uh, yeah, it's great to see that there's some compatibility there. Now, the grip itself for the camera, it's got that same classic Canon grip, which is good to see. But from what I can see from the images, that there's notib noticeably less buttons than the previous camera. So a nice, uh, let's go minimalist look to the actual design of the camera itself. Uh, and the controls uh, are fully customizable. Uh, through menus, um, you know, for the obviously for the ease of shooting. There is a new multifunction touch bar, which I notice that it's on the back, which that looks exciting because apparently you, you can control many of the features. Um, instead of touching the screen, you can use this bar, which is great. Um, I think it's probably going to be handy uh, when you are actually trying to take pictures on the go instead of putting your, your finger on the actual screen itself, which is, you know, probably good. 
Um, it's act activated uh, by one second hold, so you put your finger on it and that activates and you can swipe right or left uh, and you can um, customize it uh, to perform uh, different uh, you know, functions when you are either shooting stills or, or shooting movies and uh, even has some uh, playback uh, capabilities. So that's pretty good you know, to see some, some innovation in the, the control. Obviously in other cameras, you know, we've got the little thumbstick. Uh, now they've gone for a different method of controlling it using this sort of swipe bar in the back. So the uh, viewfinder, electronic viewfinder, it's an OLED screen and it has a pretty high resolution of about, I think it was 3.69 million dots. And um, obviously, you know, that, that's great quality, you know, so you have this, uh, what they're calling an immersive shooting experience. So it'd be great to see, you know, like, uh, you know, what you see is what you get uh, from that particular LCD screen. So, you know, it's good news. Um, the autofocus too uh, has uh, 5,600 um, points, which is, is great. Um, it shoots in 30.3 megapixel. Uh, and has the ISO range of 100 to 40,000 uh, range, so it's pretty good. So hopefully uh, it will help out with uh, low light shooting. So uh, let's see how that turns out. The screen itself, obviously, uh, like I said, it's touch control. Uh, you can uh, shoot with live view. Uh, and you can also select the uh, focus points uh, with the actual uh, screen itself. So that, that's good. So we haven't lost any functionality there, especially now that we've got the actual swipe bar as well. Now, um, Canon's inbuilt image processing uh, has been refined, uh, has uh, a new dual pixel CMOS uh, autofocus and uh, it utilizes the Digic 8 technology that we've seen in some of the other cameras, so that's good. So obviously, good high spec, uh, good comparison uh, to the uh, other DSLR cameras uh, in their range. Um, they offer, um, obviously, a good fast autofocus shooting. Uh, they're saying that it, it can focus in as little as 0.05 seconds, which is really fast. And uh, they are also saying that it can actually perform autofocus in low light conditions. They mentioned something of an EV minus six, uh, which is pretty good. But I did notice in the specs there was a little asterisk there, so I don't know what the asterisk refers to. So maybe uh, there, there are some caveats to that. There is eye detect in the autofocus, which is great news to get those sharp images. Uh, and it also has silent shooting as well uh, so that's good to see that it's catching up with um, some of the the nikon uh, uh, i guess uh, features as well so it's good to see that there, there's some competition happening in that particular space so like i was saying to you earlier there are three lens adapters available uh, one of them is just to uh, help you convert uh, from uh, ef or efs uh, to the EOS um, R uh, mount, uh, which is uh, quite handy because then you can use all your Canon glass that you may have collected over time, and so you can still get that um, good quality. Uh, and the lens mount adapter apparently has no loss in the quality or the uh, autofocus speed, which is you know great news, and I can't wait to sort of try that out. The control ring. Uh, the mount adapter that adds also, uh, there's a, sorry, there's another one that actually adds an adapter. So it allows you to have the control ring, like the other ones, to control the, the ISO aperture. Uh, but it also allows you to put in drop-in filters. Um, so that's great if you're using neutral density filters uh, or even uh, polarizing filters for... Um, you know, for taking uh, still images. That's great, so I, I saw some images of that. Um, obviously, there must be Canon uh, custom-made uh, little filters that slip into the actual mount itself, and you know, that's, that's pretty handy. Uh, allows you to not have to carry additional accessories uh, with you uh, to actually, you know, screw on those particular, uh, you know, filters. Um, Another great news is that it uses the same battery uh, that the 1DX, the 5D, 6D, 7D and 80D use, uh, which is pretty good. Um, 
so if you've already collected some of those batteries uh, you can actually um, use them on this new camera itself and they're also announcing a battery grip as well uh, which, which holds two batteries um, in, and so that obviously gives you longer uh, shooting life which is great news so they've put a lot of effort into um, putting the accessories uh, as well as the, the lenses and uh, as, as, uh, as well as the camera itself. The fully compatible with the Canon Speedlight flash guns, which is great, great news as well. Uh, and so, um, you know, once again, they've gone to a lot of trouble to actually uh, make it adaptable to the existing um, range uh, of uh, accessories they have. So let's talk about video. So this is a thing that all vloggers are actually interested in. So it supports 4K, yes, uh, at 30 frames per second, or 1080p or full HD at 60 frames per second. Now I heard on another uh, vlog that it does crop, and I think it's to about 1.6. So, you know, that, that's great news. At least, unlike the M50, it does have face uh, tracking technology with the 4K, which is an upgrade from, from the uh, uh, M50, which, does it, which turns off the um, uh, autofocus when you have it in 4K. Um, has Canon Log 10-bit 422 output uh, to an external recorder. So if you're into you know, setting up your camera with a full kit, uh, you can get a nice uh, quality with it. Now they do tell us that it has a mic input, but it has a built-in stereo mic. Now it doesn't say that it's got a, a jack for headphones, which would be really disappointing given the fact that they've given us the flippy screen. We didn't get 120 uh, frames per second. We, do, we, we can get it at a 720p recording, but that's the same as the M50. So until I do a, a deeper dive into the specs and the menu itself and what other features can be gotten out of this new camera, uh, I'm just gonna wait and see what the other reviews say. But it's, it's optimistic, obviously it, it competes um, with the Nikon Z that was just uh, announced recently. No news yet of the price range, so let's hope it's competitive. And uh, it's all good news anyway, competition's great, isn't it? So that's it, I wanted to uh, talk to you about that camera. I'm excited, I'm sure everyone else is gonna be talking about it. Uh, uh, either way, whether you love it or, or hate it, uh, let me know what you think, uh, and hopefully we'll get a chance to play with it in the near future. So from uh, wet and sad uh, Wellington, New Zealand, ciao for now.